one modem versus two. When does it make sense to invest in a cellular router that has two built-in modems, or you know, what are some other alternative ways to achieve that same level of redundancy? Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here today to talk about some of these um, cellular routers that are now coming with the option of having two integrated cellular modems, things like the Wi-Fi Ranger Everest, the new MoFi 5500, or there's been several PepWave uh, routers in the market for a while now that have the option of having two modems inside of them. So does it make sense? Do you, should you invest in getting a device that has two modems, or are there other ways to get that level of connectivity? Um, well, first off, what does it mean to have two modems? What does the modem do? Why would you even want this? The modem is the tiny little bit of electronics inside of a cellular device that connects to the cellular network. It's what talks through the antennas out to the world. And, well, you know, you need one per carrier talking out you know, any network you're connected to. So a single modem device can be connected to, say, AT&T, whereas a dual modem device can be connected to AT&T and Verizon simultaneously. So you've got two networks that you can work with. Or you know, maybe your connectivity is Verizon and T-Mobile, or Sprint is in the mix somehow. So having two modems lets you put your multiple connections to use. And we've always preached redundancy. Having two modems lets you have that redundancy on kind of instant call. Now, there's always the, you know, the kind of the old school way of, you know, having your, that redundancy of having two different hotspots. And hey, you know, my AT&T connection is going down or is not reliable. I just quickly switch the Wi-Fi pull down on my laptop and switch to Verizon, switch to my Verizon hotspot. If this was already online and ready to go, it's not much of a big deal. I've just switched out to a different connection, but that is still some downtime. And it is still a manual step. So having a router that is controlling two modems and it's all kind of integrated together means that that is no longer a step you have to juggle. You have your instant failover. Um, and kind of the way I like to think of this is if you're thinking about, well, do I need two modems is ask yourself, how quickly do you need that redundancy to kick into place? So, you know, consider what your workload is, what you're doing online during the day is if you're, you know, don't mind if the one connection goes down and it takes you a couple minutes to fumble, maybe try your other connection, swap out a SIM card, do other things, and you're back online with your backup plan in you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes or whatever, how much long time it takes you. Well, maybe you don't need a dual modem router, but if you're doing a Zoom call or other critical work and one connection goes down or gets unreliable and your job might be on the line if you don't have your backup plan basically instantly in place, well, then maybe you do need a dual modem router. So what are the, the things that a dual modem router can do for you? So there's a couple different things that a dual modem router can do when you've got you know two modems to work with. One is called hot failover. That's where you've got your one primary connection. You're online with you know, AT&T here, and you've got your secondary connection with T-Mobile connected and sitting as standby. So if your primary connection has problems, it can instantly switch, you know, fail, hot fail over from that primary connection to the secondary connection in an instant. You know, you're pulling your reserve parachute and you stay online and it can happen automatically controlled by the router. One connection goes down, the other one is up. But there's also, if you've got multiple connections to play with, there's ways to put them to use simultaneously. So uh, another feature that a dual modem router might have is load balancing, where it kind of splits your usage over your multiple connections. So if you've got a good connection on T-Mobile and a good connection on Verizon over here, well, why not divide your usage over both of them that splits the data up and gives you more overall speed? And then there's kind of a more advanced version of load balancing called bonding, where you're actually combining these two separate connections into one virtual connection that potentially gives you faster speeds and most importantly, much more reliability because the bonding, you're sending out a VPN connection over one, over the other, you've got a server on the internet that combines them back together. And if one goes down, there's not even a packet loss of frame dropped. Your Zoom call does not even stutter. Um, so bonding is an advanced feature. We've got a whole guide that explains it um, that you can go check out. 
but it's, you know, having multiple modems is part of what makes that possible or multiple ways that your router is online. One thing we get asked a lot about is people think, well, hey, I've got a router that's got two SIM slots. Does that mean I've got two modems? And not necessarily. So all PepWave routers that have cellular devices have two SIM slots per modem. And that's really handy. It means you can put, you know, your AT&T SIM in one slot and your Verizon SIM in another and switch between them. But because there's only a single modem, the modem has to basically reprogram itself from AT&T mode to Verizon mode to switch. And that could take three to five minutes. So it's not a fast, instant type of switch. Um, but, you know, other devices that have two SIM slots, like the Mo 5500 here, the dual modem version of it has two slots but each slot is going to a different modem. So you've got one SIM per modem and you know, dual modem pep waves have two SIMs per modem, but you've got two whole modems. So you can get four SIMs installed at once, switch between them, or connect it all up together. Um, so dual SIM is not the same as dual modem. It's a handy feature to have, but kind of um, in, runs in parallel. Um, another question we get about, you know, the trade-offs of dual modem is people are like, well, you know, the dual modem routers are lower end than some of the higher end devices. So, you know, the, the trade-off in particular a lot of people are coming up with is the PepWave Max Transit 5G or the PepWave Max Transit with the CAT18 modem has only an option for a single modem in it and the, and the Max Transit routers like that. Whereas the Max Transit Duo looks exactly the same physically but it has two modems. Well, why is that? But this has got CAT12, um, kind of a medium end modem in the, the Max Transit Duo, and a CAT18 or a CAT20 plus 5G in the Max Transit 5G. They look exactly the same, but the difference is when it comes down to the antennas. A CAT12 modem only needs two antennas to talk to the world. So you've got space. You've got two antennas for one modem, two antennas for the other modem. So they can both be talking and connected. A CAT18 or a 5G needs four antennas for the modem. So you've got all four of these up here. These are the Wi-Fi antennas. All four of these plugged in here are talking to that one modem. If you wanted to have a dual modem version of this, you'd have to find space for four more antenna ports, which could get really crowded on something this small. There are higher end, you know, much more expensive, much physically larger, uh, devices that have dual CAT18, dual 5G and stuff, but it gets physically tricky, much more expensive, a lot more antennas on your roof or little dongles attached to your router. So that's the kind of the trade-off. So people deciding, do I want a higher end, faster, you know, more raw capabilities in a single modem, or do I want the instant redundancy of a dual modem? So trade-off, CAT Transit, Max Transit Duo, Max Transit, CAT18, 5G. A couple, you know, we just talked about these are the some PepWave examples. Another uh, PepWave uh, router that people often go to when they're trying to get dual modems is this is the Balance 20X. Now this has got a built-in CAT4 modem, uses these two antenna ports on the front, and then it's got the SIM slots for those modems, two SIM slots hidden on the back, and then it's got a little cartridge here, and this slides out, and you can put in different modems here, a CAT6, a CAT12, or a CAT18, um, put in a slot here, and then you've got a second modem of a you know different caliber than the built-in one. So you've got four antennas coming out the back. In this case, we've got a CAT18 here, uh, two antennas out the front, and we've got a dual modem set up like that. The new MoFi 5500 comes as a dual modem option. You can get dual CAT7s, so a decent middle, middle range modem there, not quite a CAT12, but dual CAT 7s, or you can, that the version that has a step above that, you can get a CAT 20 that has, um, uses all four antenna ports for just one modem. So you've got that trade-off. Do you want kind of a lower end modem with uh, um, two modems inside, or do you want a higher end with just one modem inside? And then we've got like a new roof mounted device where you put everything up on the roof, like the Wi-Fi Ranger Everest. And Inside the, the Everest is actually two little modem slots and you can order it with either one or two modems inside. So you've got you know, potentially double cellular right there on your roof as well as your long range Wi-Fi. And another device that is um, becoming more and more prominent now, there's the InstiConnect, which is a CAT12 cellular device that goes up on your roof. 
It is a single modem in this little cartridge here with two SIM slots. So it is focused on just connectivity with one cellular device and not two um, tethered down to your inside router over USB. So there's more and more options that kind of give you that choice and you're gonna to have to make the trade-offs of do you want kind of higher end? Do you want dual modem or not? Or, well, maybe there's kind of another way to get that same type of redundancy because you know, maybe you don't need the multiple modems built in. Say you've got a single modem device, but you've got another hotspot connected to it via USB tethering to a device that supports USB tethering, like some of these do. Um, or you might have it connected via like some hotspots like these uh, Netgear Nighthawk 5G has Ethernet out, and almost every router can take a connection via Ethernet in, so you might have cellular router with one modem, and a second connection coming in via Ethernet, and you could still get a lot of the benefits of dual modem setup there. Um, and sometimes even a router that doesn't even have any cellular at all, like this a uh, Wi-Fi Ranger Spruce, this is a non-cellular, um, non-cellular router, but it has support for USB tethering, it has support for Ethernet in, and you can just start combining modems externally, and even use a powered USB hub, which is a, kind of a rare feature, but use a USB hub and then tether multiple hotspots to this and you've kind of got them all in one interface. You've got hot failover and load balancing across them. So there are ways to get other backup plans, other levels of redundancy, combining connections, um, not necessarily with going with two modems built into one physical router. But then again, it's also an immense amount of convenience to have a device like, well, like this Max Transit Duo, which has been one of our favorite ways to get online for quite a while. to have two modems, just connect to the four antenna ports to a, a four by four antenna on your roof. And you've got a lot of connectivity flexibility built right in here into one little box, no external things to deal with. And you've got that just level of, of redundancy always there. One connection is down, the next one's there. You don't even necessarily have to think about it if you've got it configured right. So that's kind of the trade-offs, the things to understand when you're trying to consider, do you want to invest in dual modems? It is potentially worthwhile. You mostly just have to ask yourself, how quickly and how important is redundancy to you? When you're pulling that reserve parachute, do you, can you, how long can you wait before you splat into the ground? These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.